Hey, what is going on you guys? It's Epic here. Welcome back to another Wayfinder video. And before it starts, it's most likely that I'm streaming Wayfinder on Twitch at EpicNNG. So come and hang out. Thank you for all the support. And today, it is finally time to get into our endgame Wingrave build. You guys have been asking for this for a while now. And just before I move on to my next character, who's going to be Venomous, I figured it's time to drop the build that you see me using on Twitch, destroying content. I'll give you guys the quick overview of my build here if you just want to copy it down and just you know send it into your game if you want to go and do that and then we're also going to break it down afterwards where we will talk more in depth about what we're doing here and what the idea behind the build is as you can see for my echoes i did not go for any purple echoes the reason why is because I want this build to be as accessible as possible. And I also want to show you guys that while this build makes everything in the game absolute cake, you can make it even stronger if you really want to put the time in. Don't worry about my infinities here. I totally messed these up. I'll talk about that a bit more in a second. But this is basically a quick overview of the build. Okay, now let's get into explaining the build. So first and foremost, of course, this is a Wingrave build. You'll need to play Wingrave. Wingrave is more of a defensive slash healing oriented character, whereas Wingrave's counterpart in the Warmaster class is going to be Senja, who's going to be more damage oriented. So if you want something that's more full forward on damage, you can go for Senja, but this build doesn't really struggle with damage either. So yeah, just bear that in mind. Our weapon is the Titan's Bane. This is again, in my eyes, the strongest weapon in Wayfinder right now. Before I get people commenting, yes, I am aware of how insanely strong the Tempest is and the Arc Storm. I saw a lot of comments on that on my Titan's Bane video, and guys, I am very well aware, but I still just think Titan's Bane is better. This is what I use to absolutely wreck bosses with ease on tier 4. Titan's Bane is even greater for this build because War Masters come with a passive to charge up their weapon abilities 50 percent faster so mixing that with just the raw power of the sword gets us insanely high damage now segueing from damage into the rest of our stats let me give you an overall summary on our stat distribution this build is going to take on a main prioritization of weapon power then break power and finally crit power and crit rating those two at the end right there you can go for more power over rating or more rating over power i know that right now we're still trying to get down how rating works in wayfinder so if you would rather go for more power over rating i totally would not blame you I just went for rating because it was the easiest obtainable to me for what I had at the time. But feel free to go for more crit power over crit rating. But you can see that right now my weapon power sitting at around 4800 and my break power at 3200. This is going to be pretty crucial in terms of how fast we are breaking bosses and also the damage we're outputting. We'll talk a little bit more about why break power is so important in this build and how it factors into what we're using in just a few minutes. But moving on, let's talk about why our max health and resilience stat is so low at around 1800 in a nutshell you do not need to stress too much about health with this build i know a lot of you are going to find it a lot harder to stay alive and so you might want to put a bit more on and that's totally fine but in my opinion i just don't think you need a lot of health when you're playing wingrave if you are going with such high damage like you are here now the reason why is because we're using the titan bane which is a two-handed sword this gives us the mastery for the executioner because that's the archetype of the weapon and in our executioner you may notice that for our mastery we're running the first column called stalwart momentum what this does is give us up to 15 percent incoming damage reduction this is dependent on whether or not we have momentum and i would guess it's around five percent per tier if it's 15 at max and you get three tiers on your executioner so so long as we always have momentum which we always do because we are constantly building it we are going to get a ton of damage reduction now i have tested this versus other columns in this mastery tree and i am telling you that right now the reason why I am not using any mastery is because if I do not have this on, I will get one tapped. That is when I will start to feel the penalty for having such low health. But this column here is what lets us stay alive so easily. I 
love this column and I typically wouldn't go for something like this in this kind of game. I'm not a fan of just going for damage reduction. I find it kind of boring, but it is so crutch here. So overall, just remember that we don't need to stress too much about our overall max health rating because our mastery is going to prevent us from getting one tapped a lot of the time. Now, while we're on the subject of stalwart momentum, let's talk about why we are not using heavy hitter. You may be tempted in the comments and probably already have said epic. Why are you not running heavy hitter if this is mainly focusing on breaking enemies? It gives you up to 40% more break damage on heavy attacks. Well, my friends, there are two reasons for this. Number one, heavy attacks take a lot of time to fire off. And when you're playing on high level content and things are outscaling you by like 500 power, it is just not a smart idea to get locked into an animation and potentially get one tapped. It has happened to me so many times. Okay, so many times. So that is why we are not taking heavy hitter additionally the other reason why we're not taking heavy hitter is because if you've built yourself for enough break power like we have that plus the bonus we're going to get from using a sword because remember we're also going to gain a bonus just using our sword to break power additionally that bonus is going to break enemies fast enough the mastery is simply not necessary here yes you can run it yes it's going to help you but you, you really don't need it. Take my word for this, guys. You do not need to use Heavy Hitter. I know that 40% is ever so tempting, but believe me, it is not necessary. You do not need to use Heavy Hitter. And also, we're not using Inertia because this is going to stop our momentum from decaying, which is like meaningless to us because we're always firing it off as soon as we get it maxed so uh yeah we we just don't need inertia and we don't need heavy here now really quickly let's take a pit stop at my infinity here i want to discuss something very important with you guys i know you are going to scream when you look at my infinity and you might be shocked to know that what I'm not about to tell you is that I've made a big brain play here. I messed up badly here, but you don't have to. Remember guys, you cannot respec your character's affinity yet in Wayfinder when I'm making this video. You cannot respec it, so do not make the bad mistake that I did of trying to freestyle your affinity thinking that you're going to be able to respec it at some point. Friends, you cannot do that. I should also note that while the affinity perks for Wingrave aren't crucial to get right like they might be on some other characters, characters, I do highly, highly recommend you take a distribution of Instinct 15 and Focus 5 for the perks primarily. The reason why is because at Instinct 15, you are going to get a ton of extra healing, which is more survivability, which is always good. And at Focus 5, you're going to get incoming damage when you use your healing pulse, which you're always doing. So more survivability here is always going to be better. Do bear in mind though that if you want more survivability in terms of just max health and you also want crit rating and power which is very important for us then Discipline's going to do that for you. However, Instinct is going to net you weapon and ability power, and Focus is going to net you break power, physical defense, and magical defense, which those two stats I just personally don't see being very useful right now. I've got them very high, as you can see, but either way, if you're on low health, you're going to get one tap. Now, into our abilities tab, let's talk upgrades. You're going to get seven upgrade points, and you can respec these. So if you've messed up, feel free to just simply respec and go again. Now let's talk about our upgrades. First of all, let's start at the top and go to the bottom. We've got here our Radiant Pulse to tier three. Why do we have this tier three? Simply because tier three is going to make this shield heal you, which is very, very nice because it is literally just AFK healing. We are not maxing this out for any of the perks in tier one and tier two. That stuff really isn't helpful for us we're only going for tier three to get healed behind the shield it says that at tier three you will slowly heal allies standing behind your shield well friends i have good news for you you are also an ally so when you cast the shield which i can't do because i'm in skylight it's going to heal you as well for around 300 350 health so my friends having this at tier three very good passive healing easy survivability we love it now moving in to our divine ages aka the bubble this is our ultimate skill we have this at tier two the reason we have this at tier two is because number one we want more duration on our shield because at tier zero this thing has absolutely crap duration and we have it at level two because quite frankly we want to stack up vengeance giving us more weapon power that's really really nice for us there are many many times where i have set up really quick kills on bosses by dropping 
my ult, judging the enemy and letting them stack up damage on me and then just whacking them for one giant crit. So that's why we have our bubble at level 2. You can go to level 3 if you want, but I have personally never seen level 3 benefiting me enough to warrant me using that point on it. Instead, we'll use that spare point to go to tier 2 on judgment, which is going to increase the amount of healing we get from judgment by 10%. But if you don't want to go for level 2 judgment, then sure, put that point into Aegis, but make sure you put at least one point into judgment to get level 1, which will make hits against judged enemies deal additional break damage. Remember earlier when I told you guys that we just don't need the extra 40% that we're going to get in the mastery tree? This is why. Whenever I want to break something, I will go up to it, judge it, which has a very tiny radius, but you just stand next to an enemy and fire it off, and then we break them with absolute ease. Trust me, my friends. Judgment tier 1, mixed with our break power and our weapon type, Easy breaks, easy breaks all day long. Now, finally ending in this category, why are we not upgrading Righteous Strike? Well, because quite frankly, level one is damage reduction while using Righteous Strike, but I would never fire off Righteous Strike in a situation where it is not safe to do so. So for me, this point is a complete dud. For level two, this is more so for if you're gonna be spamming it in some form of ability build, which we are not running here. So I don't take level one for that reason. So all other points become invalid by that so i don't use level one for that reason and because i don't use level one two and three are completely irrelevant but let's talk about them for a second level two is damage and healing well righteous strike already heals me a significant amount and in combination with radiant pulse i just don't need the extra healing right now maybe i would if i had higher health but i don't and as such that's where we're at also, the damage increase is going to be nice if we're doing, again, an ability build, but we're not, so we don't need it. And for level 3, the healing from Righteous Strike will replenish some resilience. Again, we just don't need this. Yes, it's nice. Do we need it? No. We have limited points here, and we have to use them in the most optimal way for our build, so Righteous Strike stays unupgraded. Now, into our Echoes tab, there is not much to talk about here, because again, I kept this all relatively simple. Remember what you're going for here in the stat distribution? Just rinse and repeat over in this area, but there are some things I do want to talk about. Firstly, the one Echo in here that you will need to know how to get is the Equilibrium Echo. We are running this, guys, purely because equipping the echo gets you plus 30 to your max stamina stamina is absolutely incredible in this game it is so important if you don't have stamina in this game you may die because of it like if you are out of stamina and you can't dodge an attack or you can't dodge away from a dangerous situation you're gonna get screwed so stamina is very good and the equilibrium echo is just free it's literally free at this point so how do you get the equilibrium echo you have to do the light and dark event in the repository it's a logic puzzle where you need to make both sides of the same single color so one side has to be light and one side has to be dark when you do this you should get or at least have a chance to get the equilibrium echo again just to recap this echo is phenomenal because stamina is a huge factor in survivability i was using at another point the beastmaster echo which is also great and if you want to take that or if you have another slot where you can take that then absolutely go ahead and do so but I just think the Equilibrium Echo benefits me the most passively, and as such, that's what I choose to run. But again, if you have the capacity for it, then I do also recommend the Beastmaster Echo, because that is also very, very strong. Now, let's quickly talk about your accessories here for a second. There are two things that I want to note here. First of all, you might notice that I'm not using a gear set. The reason why is because working out how gear sets work, I have come to the conclusion that right now it is just not worth your time to go and farm for a gear set. I was looking up the twins gear set as a potential factor to use here, but it is just so incredibly rare to farm for and the stat trade-off just isn't that worth it. It is better off just building your stats the way you want to and not worrying about gear sets for now in my opinion. If you disagree, that's totally fine, but I just don't see it as an efficient use of time. Not only that, but additionally, it would appear that the accessories that can be dropped for this gear set can also bug. As you will see when I scroll down, my one did. I got the Art of Blades at level 31, and that's a big problem. Why? Because we literally can't get to level 31 right now. So... 
Right now, I just don't think it is worth going for a gear set, but I do think you should go after the accessories which build your stats the way you want to, so just bear that in mind. Another thing to bear in mind is to not let the levels of your accessories dip. Mine are all 27, I've got 124 right now. As long as you're rocking above, I'd say maybe 23, you should be good, but try to get these as high as you can. Additionally, a lower level accessory is going to have less echo slots potentially too you can see here that i have a level 21 with two echo slots but this level 13 only has one not good my friends make sure that you are always getting high echo slots we want as many as we can possibly get and now friends finally let's talk about combinations when you're actually playing this build now it is not as simple as just putting on this build and using things of course you actually need to know how to play it so let me show you how that works i'm in storm twins right now just here one so i can showcase what i'm talking about for you guys this build is going to be all about how fast you are able to stack up your weapon ability so that you can fire it off this is all about combos and momentum stacking which i have a video on if you want to go and check out but in short, the combination for stacking up is simply going to be, of course, making sure first you're targeted by an enemy and then doing three light attacks and a block or a dodge if you want to, but a block works perfectly fine. I'll show you what that looks like here. So we're going to do light attack, light attack, light attack, block, and then we're going to repeat. And this is going to allow us to build up very, very easily. And once we're at max ability charges, or and once we're at max momentum charges on our weapon, we can fire that off to get our damage boost. Remember that we're playing Wingrave, so three charges of momentum gives us 30% more weapon power. So when you're playing, you're going to make sure that you're always going to open with a tier 3. And once you've opened with a tier 3, then you're going to go with your tier 1 and fire that off. And then from there, for me, it's pretty much rinse and repeat. Sometimes I'll prioritize doing more light attacks first. But usually the loop is always just doing a tier 3 and then a tier 1. Okay, so friends, I've reset the twins here to show you how breaking works. This is going to be very similar to what we were already doing in terms of our combo with momentum, starting with the 3, then going to the 1. But we're also going to utilize our judgment ability by just going next to them and judging them so they take more break damage. So let me show you how that works as well. We're going to start here by stacking up our momentum and then once we're ready we're going to go next to the enemy we're going to hit him with judgment and then our ability and you can almost instantly break it with just the ability but of course you can also put in some extra hits and breaking is just that simple of course on something like a tier 4 this is going to be a lot more difficult but I still just don't think it's very difficult at all, just to the nature of how much break we have. And that pretty much does it for the build. I hope I haven't left anything out here. But in short, you guys have been spamming me a lot for this build. So here it is. This is what I'm using at Endgame. It's what I've been running all of the content with and just running through bosses with <laughs> relative ease. So uh, yeah, I hope that guys helps you out. We're going to be moving on to Venomous next. So let me know, what do you want to see me try? I'm Venomous. I maybe could do something cool with her dots. Until the next one, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you later.